I'm Greg Jarrett. You're in the Strategy Room. There's a new proposal in Seattle to increase housing availability for Muslims across the city, and it's gaining nationwide attention. One suggestion being debated is to adjust regulations to allow those who follow Sharia law to more easily buy homes. The proposal would let lenders offer Sharia-compliant financing. This would include no interest on loans in order to follow one of the main pillars of Islam. So is this idea giving an advantage to one specific group uh, over another? Is it fair? Here now with reaction, our political strategist, Jimu Green and Flip Pittet. Welcome um, to both of you. Um, Jimu, what do you think of this? I think we're a melting pot, and that's the America that was defined to me growing up. And if there is any religion, any group that is having more difficulty uh, assimilating, that what we have done as a country is to find ways to bring them in to our fabric of the nation. And um, without going into the details of this particular proposal, I think that the intention is where America started. And it's good to see that that's where we are today. You know, Flip, no one's being discriminated against in Seattle or elsewhere uh, when you say, look, if you want a loan, you got to pay an interest on it. That's right. standard for everybody. Why should Muslims gain an advantage, mm -hmm. uh, special legislation that would allow financing without interest? Right. Well, I think it actually does depend a little bit on the details here where you know, it sounds like lenders have devised uh, an alternative financial product that might be Sharia compliant, where it's more like preferred equity tied to profit stream coming from an, an asset rather than being strictly interest. Um, and if the current regulations are such that that's not permissible as, as a mortgage product to sell to the public, either in that municipality or state, um, then alleviating that burden, that maybe unnecessary regulation, as long as it's for everyone, not just those who claim Sharia compliance, uh, that would seem like a step in the right direction toward a less, you know, less fettered uh, financial market. If, on the other hand, this is a special carve-out for those who claim Sharia compliance or if it's in any way subsidized or otherwise made easier for a specific subset, any demographic or, or, or religious or, or you know, other subdivision of, of the citizenry that we're going to offer you know, sp special accommodation for, I think, becomes more of a problem. But if instead this is just removing a barrier right. that allows this financial innovation in the private sector to say, here's an unmet section of the uh, of, you know, would-be homeowners that we can meet with this uh, uh, innovative financial product, that, you know, then I'd be for it. Yeah, I mean, you might open yourself up to a lawsuit, Seattle might, if, if they do a special carve-out for one particular group based on religion. You might have a First Amendment violation, government promoting one religious group over another, don't you think? Certainly. And um, I, I am not familiar if that is what is a part of this proposal that Seattle is considering, but I'm certainly in favor of making sure that if there is a community that is not able to access the full breadth and, and uh, weight of uh, opportunity, uh, whether it's in Seattle or anywhere in this nation, that we should find ways to Well, they can access it if they in. want. They just don't want to because they claim it runs afoul of Sharia law, which says you can't pay interest on loans. Well, I, I don't necessarily think that this is the, the first situation of a group, uh, spe specifically a religious group, having certain barriers that we try as a nation, as a community, to welcome them in. Um, there are a number of religions that, that have particular uh, beliefs that affect how they interact with society, and this is not the first time. But they don't gain an advantage financially mm -hmm. over everybody else. Right, and that's why I say that the devil, I think, is in the, in the details, where if, you know, it could be really something to celebrate. If one group is saying, look, I, I need a financial product that doesn't actually involve an interest component, and you've got lenders saying, look, we can structure that for you, but the current regulations won't allow us to sell you that product, let's lift those regulations for everyone. Yeah. I think that could be a good example of the private market innovating a solution. Yeah. Um, but again, that that's where the details will, will be so key, because if it's the mayor or the, the city council in Seattle saying, well, we actually want to make a special carve out here uh, for a special accommodation, it becomes a, a very different story. You got about 30,000 Muslims in the great Seattle area, but not all are Sharia uh, abiding. And so, and in fact, I think the mayor said, we're only talking about a few hundred people, a couple of hundred people here. 
Yeah, but we've also, you know, been a country that had blue laws in place for reasons that were specific to one religion. You still do, and actually, in, in some states. Yes, in many places there are blue laws. And so I, I don't think that we, this conversation should be uh, specific to the Sharia law aspect of it and uh, come to it from a place of what the intention is and also how we have dealt with this when it comes to other religions. All right. Jamu and Flip, thanks for being with us. Check out foxnews.com for more on this developing story. I'm Greg Jarrett. Thanks for watching.